What's up, my wizards? Dev from SBMTG, that channel down there you know by now, and I got something special for you, I hope, today. This is the top 20 cards in Standard. I talked about doing 15, but really there's so many good cards in Standard right now, we might as well do the top 20 cards in Standard. And uh, just for time's sake, let's go ahead and move right into it here. Well, you can't do a list like this without doing an honorable mention. Why not? And I'm going to go ahead and say... Honorable mention for this environment right now is the lands, of course, right? Before, you know, you got temples, you got your mana confluence, you got your nykthos, you got your haven. Uh, there's so many things that we use in this format right now. Pain lands, even game lands, try lands. I mean, you can't, just lands screwing up our budgets nowadays, but you gotta have them. And right now we have some of the best lands that we've ever had in one single format. So... Lands might be expensive, but they're super awesome right now. Number 20, go ahead and start the list off here, is Perilous Vault. Perilous Vault seen a lot more play lately. It's colorless mass removal in a three-color format. It exiles things, getting rid of pesky, you know, death mist raptors, the occasional uh, phoenix even, of... Uh, Regenerators, uh, Rakshasa's Death Dealer, stuff like that. Uh, the fle uh, Fleece Mane Lion, you know, there's plenty of things this gets rid of that other removal might not. And this is getting slotted in even more than Crux of Fate lately because we see a lot of dragons and we see a lot of non-dragons, which sort of drives down the potential of a card like Crux of Fate. So, Perilous Vault, definitely going to make the list here. Number 19 is Dragon Lord. Atarka, the first dragon lord on the list, obviously. Um, yeah, Atarka, really good finisher nowadays. A linchpin in sort of the uh, green-red devotion decks that we see. He's in Jund, he's in just sort of green-red everything now. And green-red dragons is a list that we see popping up more and more and more. And he's even in sort of the Naya dragons thing. He pops up everywhere. Jund reanimator, I don't know if I said that. But he, he pops up everywhere nowadays. We see Atarka a lot, and he's just a ridiculous bomb when he hits the battlefield. So definitely making the list. Number 18 is a card that messes with everything. Honestly, this is Mastery of the Unseen. Yeah, it's got its own deck. It's that powerful. And, you know, Megamorph in these colors, so green-white, is just so good. And Mastery <laughs> makes it even better. Like I said, messes with aggro, control, mid-range, just gives people fits. And so it's going to make the list, definitely. People talked about this when it was spoiled, saying eh, it might be a thing. No, it's definitely a thing. And it's hitting standard sort of hard right now. It's a mid-range wrecker. Number 17 is a card that just will not go away. This is Goblin Rabble Master. We've been talking about this guy for years now. And he's still got, what, six months or something in the format? A few, well, four months, something like that. Anyway, yeah, Rabble Master is still crazy. He enables Mono Red almost single-handedly. He does a lot of work for red-white tokens. We see him in more stuff than that. There's a Naya mid-range deck that's popping up, and he's four of in it. So, yeah, Rabble Master. All day still causing headaches for Control, and Control is a very powerful deck in the format right now. So, Rabble Master, good metagame pick. At number 16, we see our first Planeswalker on the list. This is Soren. Soren, uh, just really an all-star in the Abzan decks. And Abzan is probably the number one deck in the format right now. Um, no matter what, I mean, Abzan Megamorph, Abzan Control, mid-range, even an aggro deck out there. Abzan takes many forms, and Soren is in nearly all of them because he does all the things for that deck. Number 15 is Seeker of the Way. Yeah, Seeker of the Way has been just an all-star since he was first even playable. Everyone knows how ridiculous this thing is. He just makes combat so stressful for your opponents. And he goes in everything, to be honest. If you're playing white, you're very often going to play Seeker. So definitely on our list. Uh, just kick off sort of the top 15. Number 14 is definitely one of the most prevalent uh, removal cards in the format right now. This is Ultimate Price. Uh, definitely, I just said if you play white, you're probably going to play Seeker. If you play black, you're almost certainly playing Ultimate Price. This card is ridiculous. Kills, what is it, six or seven of the creatures on this list, I want to say? So, yeah, Ultimate Price is ridiculous. It was ridiculous in the last format we played it in, and it's no different here. It's always good. We saw people playing one ofs in control and stuff, and now we see people playing two ofs in control in mid-range. If you're playing black, ultimate price is almost certainly a must. It's splashable. That's a good thing, right? And uncommon. You can get your hands on one pretty easily, too, and it's one of the best removal spells in the entire format. Number 13 
is one half of the Dream Team, man. Marluigi, Sonic Knuckles, and Death Miss Raptor and Din Protector. Death Miss Raptor is going to come in at number 13 here. Death Miss Raptor is just you know, impossible to get rid of. And people always say, like I just said, you know, team him up with uh, Din Protector. But he goes so well into anything that has multiple Megamorph creatures. We see Hidden Dragon Slayer and even Inox Survivalist sometimes. And other things, you know. Uh, Master of the Unseen just enables this all day long. And Death Miss Raptor is an almost every deck that can produce green mana nowadays. He's going to be like Corsair Crufer at Crufix after uh, Corsair rotates out. Guaranteed he's going to be in everything for the next couple of years. So definitely Death Miss Raptor. We got to find a way to deal with this guy. I'm in at number 12. He almost was top 10 here, but he moved his way slowly down the list as I made it. Uh, Silumgar, the Drifting Death, another Dragon Lord. Yeah, we see this a lot, obviously, in Esper and Blue Black Dragons. Uh, yeah, no doubt, Drifting Death is ridiculous. Hexproof, one of the best abilities in Magic, always. And, uh, yeah, not only that, he's an aggro wrecker once you get him out onto the board. And 3-7, that's <laughs> tough to deal with, man. Even if he didn't have the Hexproof, that'd be hard to figure out. So, definitely going to make the list. I, Like I said, I wanted him to be top 10, but as I sort of sussed the list out, he moved his way down. So, sorry <laughs> if you thought maybe he should be like top 10, but he, he really just goes in that one control deck, and there are things definitely that go in a lot more stuff. Number 11 here, sort of the honorable mention of the top 10. This is Ugin the Spirit Dragon. Yeah, any deck that can produce a ton of mana or any deck that sort of goes a long game like Control is going to usually play one copy of this. Now, the green-red Devotion decks and some of the ramp decks have sort of slotted this out as of late in favor of larger creatures and see the unwritten. But we still see at least the one-of copy in Control for this. And a lot of times it's the whole reason we play Haven of the Spirit Dragon. So... Definitely Ugin the Spirit Dragon. When he comes out, he is just on resolution one of the probably the best card in the format, but we gotta get him out first. And some decks specialize in it, some decks count on it, but he's not the best card ever. But once he comes out, he's probably gonna win the game for you. Let's go ahead and start the top ten here. Number ten is Hero's Downfall. Yeah, I kind of wanted this to be higher up the list too, but definitely, let me just say this: one of the best removal cards almost ever. Everyone played a four of murder a couple of years back and you know sometimes a two or three of but a lot of times a four of and this is strictly better than even murder and murder was incredible so definitely <laughs> Hero's Downfall I think deserves a spot in the top ten. Um, like I said just prevalent removal it's in every single deck that plays black because it sort of has to be it's unconditional just get rid of that right now and cards like that are always going to be extremely powerful. Number nine is Den Protector. Yeah, you might be thinking, when am I going to see the other half of this? Den Protector jumps up the list a little bit just because he's so utility. And, yeah, I've, how do I have to explain it more than that? He not only gets your removal back for you, but sort of saves your guys from removal. Um, does a lot for you in this format and swings in pretty well sometimes, too. So, yeah, fully support Den Protector. I always have to. I knew this was going to be a fantastic card. And it has proven itself. Time and time again, definitely in the top 10 Den Protector, and it'll only get better as time goes on, I think. Number 8 is Silumgar Scorned. Yeah, this is pretty much a hard counter 90-something percent of the time. Even if you don't have the Dragon in player in your hand, just we're in a format right now that curves so well. Turn 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, even 6. We're all doing things that cost exactly as much mana as we have. Even the ramp decks are doing that. So just that extra one mana investment they have to make if you don't have the dragon is sometimes that'll wreck them. And if you do have the dragon, obviously this is just counterspell. So maybe Wizards was right, you know. We've been saying for years now that counterspell wouldn't break standard, but this is a watered down version of counterspell. And it's not breaking standard, but it is definitely in the top ten. Any deck that plays blue is going to play Silumgar's Scorn, and Blue has some of the best dragons too, as we will see. Number seven is the card that enables nearly every green deck in the format to do what it does. This is Sylvan Caryatid, one of the best Birds of Paradise we've ever gotten next to Birds of Paradise. I would say that good evidence that Birds of Paradise won't be reprinted in Magic Origins like everyone wants it to be is that Sylvan Caryatid is in the format right now. There's no way you could have both those cards in the format at the same time. Sylvan Caryatid enables everything from Green Red Devotion, Ramp, Abzan, everything in the format that plays green is going to 
play Sylvan Carry Added. We're in a tri-color, sometimes even five-color format right now. And Sylvan Carry Added lets us do all those things and blocks aggro and can't be removed except by mass removal. Carry Added, definitely one of the best in the format. Number six is Thoughtseize. This is exactly as we as good as we thought it was going to be when it was spoiled. We all freaked out about Thoughtseize. It's coming back again, and yeah, it's always good, no matter what. Midrange, Abzan, Reed, and uh, Control both play this card to great effect. And ironically, it sort of wrecks Midrange and Control. That's why they both play it, is to wreck those two decks. And yeah, it's not even bad against Aggro. You pick just anything out, and that two life investment against aggro is going to be worth, you know, possibly up to eight or ten life sometimes. So, yeah, Thoughtseize, always a good card. Probably the best discard card ever ever printed next to maybe him of Turak, but him to Turak. But we'll see. We'll see. I think Thoughtseize definitely enables control even to be a thing next to some of the other cards we see, and we'll get to those two coming up. Number five is the ever-present Scourge, Siege Rhino. Siege Rhino, we talk about it constantly on pretty much every Magic channel, like how do we get through Siege Rhino? It's what, make Ab it's what makes Abzan a thing, honestly. Abzan probably wouldn't be a thing if it weren't for this card, because like, White Black has to play green for Siege Rhino. <laughs> That's 90% of the day they have to play green for Sylvan Carry Added Siege Rhino and something else that we'll see coming up here. And Siege Rhino is probably the most pure value creature in the entire format, next to maybe, it's in the top three, we'll say, um, just pure value creatures. Four mana, it comes down on the third turn very often in the decks that it's in, and we see removal out there that is specifically tailor-made to deal with Siege Rhino, say Roast, for example, or Radiant Purge, even, um, Glare of Heresy, a lot of people are including that, so yeah, Siege Rhino definitely top of the pops right now, definitely in the top five, because Every deck has to have a way to deal with Siege Rhino. Number four is probably one of the best card advantage engines we've ever seen in Magic. I mean, it's no Ancestral Recall, but nothing is. This is Dig Through Time. Obviously, this is going to be in the top five. Uh, Dig Through Time, usually, is two mana to get the best two cards out of the top seven at instant speed. Uh, yeah, I love that it's called Dig Through Time, too, because 90% of the time, that's what you're doing. You're digging for a counterspell or a threat or a response of some kind. So, Dig Through Time? Definitely, dude, that's, okay. It's, it is obviously something we have to manipulate, but it's a very easily manipulatable uh, situation. So, Dig Through Time, definitely in my top five. It's in literally every control deck in the format, and control is such a presence right now. And even decks that play blue that aren't control will try to shoehorn in Dig, because it's, just, it's ridiculous, obviously. Have you read this card? Number three is an OG. This is Courser of Crufix. You know you'd have to see it in the top 20 somewhere. I'm putting it in the top three because Courser is still something that absolutely drives the format. The format sort of revolves around Courser of Crufix in a lot of ways. Uh, as far as devotion, control decks need something to deal with it, even other mid-range decks, and obviously aggro decks need to find a way to get around it. This sort of single-handedly holds off aggro to be a dominant force in the format because Courser of Crufix is around. Courser just, I can't say anything about this card that hasn't already been said. We've been dealing with it for two years now, and it's still got a few months in the format. When it rotates out, the entire format will change. Same thing with Sylvan Carry Added. When those two cards go out, the format will be completely different, and so much of it revolves around those two, and especially Courser of Crufix, that it definitely makes my top three. Let's get controversial with our, <laughs> with our top, you know, one and two here. Number two is Storm Breath Dragon. We see this in every deck that plays red, and red is one of the most played colors in the entire format. Obviously, Mono Red Aggro doesn't play this card, but any other deck, mostly mid-range, and even some aggro decks, do play this card. It gets around almost everything in the format that we care about other than, like, Heroes Downfall and Ultimate Prize. By the way, Stormbred Dragon is single-handedly why Ultimate Price is such an incredible card. And if this sticks against control, it's not only four haste damage immediately, but it when it monstrouses, it deals lots of damage to them and lots of damage on swing too. So really hard card to deal with for a lot of decks. And swings through a lot of the important cards in the format too for combat damage. So yeah. Storm Breath, definitely in my top three. We see that along with the Tarka, this, again, single-handedly just sort of 
makes ramp decks the thing they are. When this comes down on the third or fourth turn, it will win you the game over, you know, nine-tenths of the time. That's that's an objective estimate, I think. Storm Breath is just so overpowered right now that it's definitely at least in the top five. I'm putting it in the top three. Before I go over number one, I do want to apologize for some cards that didn't make the list because I know that in the comments people are going to be like, why didn't X or Y make the list? Um, because we're not doing Pokemon games, lol. Anyway, these are cards that didn't make the list. Uh, obviously, Crux of Fate didn't make the list. I felt like Perilous Vault was better than it, and it's getting slotted out more and more in favor of Vault right now. Um, Elspeth didn't make the list, a Planeswalker that still sees some play, but nowhere near as dominant as she was, say, a year ago. Um, green creatures in general that didn't make the list, your Pelucranos, Arbor Colossus, Hornet Queen, Elvish Mystic, Genesis Hydra. Um, we see that, if I honestly, if I had to pick one of those creatures to make the list, Elvish Mystic, <laughs> definitely. Um, if, it were in, if I did a top 25, it would definitely be like number 20, Two or something like that, but didn't include all of these cards because they mostly are sort of salt and pepper in decks that do other things. Um, Dramoka and Atarka's Commands, the two commands didn't make the list. Um, Atarka's Command, obviously good in the one thing, but it's got a whole deck named after it. And then Dramoka's Command, really good in heroic decks, and really good in heroic decks. <laughs> That's all I can say. But again, if I did a top 25, they would probably make the list. Um, Fleece Mane Lion would almost certainly be my number 21 card if I were to make a list. Um, Fleece Mane Lion is just so ridiculously good, and there's a lot of cards that are specifically to deal with it, too. You know, we see a lot of sacrifice things like Foul Tongue Invocation, which could have possibly also made a list like this. Um, Red cards in general, Stoke the Flames, Monastery Swift Spear, even Wild Slash and Lightning uh, Strike, both very heavily played, or all very heavily played cards right now, um, but sort of almost too common to make the list. I know that sounds crazy, but Lightning Strike doesn't go on a list with cards as powerful as these, I would say, even though it is a format staple. So those are pretty much, yeah, I think those are all. I'd say, well, there's one more I want to address. Possibly Thunderbreak Regent, whose play has gone down a little bit since he was first, you know, made playable in this format, but is still a very powerful card. Um, so, yeah, those are all the cards that didn't make the list that people in the comments will probably still be like, why, but I really like this card, and definitely do that. I want to know how you feel about this list in the comments, because, you know, we care about that kind of thing. <laughs> I definitely want some debate started here, because I, I certainly see how some things could make the list and some things might not here. But, the, again, sort of a subjective list, but I'm trying to be as objective as possible. That, that said, let's move on to number one. Number one you probably guessed by now, is Dragonlord Ojutai. I think that this creature, more than any other right now, helps to shape the format. Just even when he was first spoiled, people were like, oh my god, Ojutai is going to be crazy. This messes with combat sort of in the same way that Seeker of the Way does, but it's always going to deal 5 damage when it goes through. It's going to net you card advantage, which is insane. It, it anticipates for you every time you hit which is just un it's unbelievable when you hit with this card that you deal, you know, a quarter of their life total to them and you get a card, the best card out of the top three. Um, just keeps itself going when it hits and when you do swing, really is stressful for opponents because they don't know if you have some sort of protection or counter spell in your hand, which 90% of the time when the two type player swings, they do and you know it as the opponent. So you have to have a way to get around it and there's almost no way to. Again, we see Foul Tongue Invocation and some mass removal, but that's about it as far as Ojutai. When he hits the board, he wins the game more than almost any other card in the format, probably more than any card in the format. Um, this is why Stormbreath Dragon actually is so high up the list, because he deals with Ojutai so well. Blocks him without caring, swings through him without caring, sits on the board and laughs at him. Ojutai is just so good now, though, that I think that he, even more so than, say, Siege Rhino, shapes the entire format he makes Esper Dragons a thing. He makes most Dragon decks a thing, and Dragon decks are the number one decks in the format next to maybe Abzan. So 
I think definitely justifies the number one position for a Jew tie here. Let me know if you think differently, and I respect you if you do. So, all the colors are very, very well represented in this format, and there's a lot of crazy decks going on, and a lot of very stable decks right now, so I think we're in a really good standard environment. And if you think so, or if you don't think so especially, hop on over. We got a couple of other videos here. The State of Standard is up on our channel right now. This is where we analyze the top five decks in standard right this second and we'll do another one of those videos in just a couple of weeks so stick with us we're doing magic origin spoilers right now and we've got awesome budget deck techs on our channel as well we just put up a deck that costs three dollars and sixty cents to make it's monocolored and has an infinite combo that wins on turn four so make sure that you subscribe to our channel like share comment we love when you talk to us because we talk right back and I'm Dev from SBMTG. Let us know how you felt about this list and subscribe for way more Magic Origin spoilers are coming up too. So yeah, stick with us and we'll put out more great content for you. Thanks for tuning in to this list and we'll see you guys later. Appreciate you watching, Wizards.